بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم The topic for today is mixed anxiety and depression. I am Dr. Tayyab Aikram working as a consultant psychiatrist in Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, Faisalabad Medical University. Mood changes from day to day are a part of normal life, but the clinical depression is a picture in which there is low mood, lack of interest and energy for at least two weeks. There could be some other features like weight change, disturbed appetite and sleep, becoming restless, feeling slow, inability to think or concentrate. In severe cases, people may become suicidal. Depression is an umbrella term. It could be with a number of other symptoms like physical symptoms, anxiety, obsessional, dissociative symptoms. There could be cognitive problems and psychotic symptoms. So our topic is mixed anxiety and depression. In other words, this is depression with anxiety symptoms. So uh, this is one of the different types of depression, which can be severe enough to become to make people panic and phobic as well. These are different areas of classification of depression. It could be reactive and or endogenous, neurotic versus psychotic, mild, moderate or severe, unipolar or bipolar which means it could be with mania or without it it could be primarily itself or secondary to some other illness major and minor and we do have some criteria with icd-10 and dsm-5 which help us to diagnose depression in general population the prevalence of depression is 58 percent in chronically ill is 9.4 hospitalized 33 percent in geriatric patients who are admitted in wards or in the hospitals 36 percent cancer patients who are outpatient 33 and in patients 42 percent in stroke this is as high as 45 and in myocardial infarction as high as 45 percent parkinson's disease has depression depression prevalence of 39 percent it is a very common disorder. Lifetime prevalence is 17%. It is double in women with a mean age of onset of 30 years. Etiology is based on biopsychosocial model. The biological factors may include genetics, like someone may be having it in the family. Biochemical reasons might be there, like disturbed levels of norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine are considered to be reasons of depression. Again, under the biological reasons, there is a list of causes which might be there like neuroendocrine excess problems, sleep problems or circadian rhythms, medical disorders which may be causing depression. Some neurological illnesses including Parkinson's, Huntington's, Alzheimer's disease, CVS and brain tumors or trauma, infections in the CNS, dementia, epilepsy and Wilson's may cause depression. Some systemic infections like viral and bacterial may be responsible for it. For example, in patients with enteric fever, sometimes they suffer from depression. Endocrine problems like thyroid, adrenal, parathyroid, and postpartum problems may result in depression. Some autoimmune illnesses, SLE, rheumatoid disorders, some vitamin deficiencies, and some other reasons like uremia and liver problems, or any other long standing debilitating illness, koi bhi aisi bimari, jo patient ko uski normal life se, ek long term ke liye hata de, it may cause depression. Some drugs we use in patients, like antihypertensives and cardiac drugs, some barbiturates and steroids, may also cause depression. CNS stimulants, when they are taken and when there is a withdrawal of them, it results in severe depression. Psychotropic drugs, which are antipsychotics, some neurological drugs, amenthidine, bromocryptine, levodopa, and baclofen, and interestingly, some pain relieving medications may also cause depression. Some antibacterial and antifungal drugs, there is a list of them. Some drugs used in cancer patients may be contributing to depression. Miscellaneously, acetylcholamide, which is a diuretic, and disulfiram may cause depression. Psychologically, if a person is introvert with a stressful, um, stress, stress-prone personality, difficult to cope with stress, finds difficult to um, to, to face criticism, may is more prone to become depressed later in life. 
there's some other theories behind it but psych but pre morbid personality is the most important of it these are some of the stressful events in one's life which may make a person depressed and understandably so like a person losing one or both of parents becoming unemployed lack of relationships being divorced or stressful life events as far as prognosis is concerned the more severe and more frequent the episodes of depression the worse is the prognosis if a person suffers from one major depressive episode there is 50 to 70% chances of relapse Unfortunately 30% will become chronically ill and 11 to 17% will commit suicide in among the seriously ill patients. Treatment will comprise of reducing symptoms, restoring function and minimizing the relapse. Management will comprise of some tests including some physical and psychological tests. Uh, physical tests will depend upon the physical condition and psychiatric history and psychological tests may comprise of a number of psychological batteries and psychometric tests which will assess the severity of symptoms and response to treatment for example montgomery asperger depression rating scale hamilton depression rating scale and anxiety scales are also there and social economic factors need to be assessed in detail by the interviewer Physically, we will depend upon drugs, ECTs. Antidepressants include tricyclic antidepressants, which are very effective drugs, but they do have very adverse effects on heart, on uh, other systems of the body, and these work by improving the level of serotonin in the brain. Examples are amitriptyline, clomipramine, and imipramine. The dosage may differ, may be different for different drugs. adverse effects may be dry mouth and constipation and urinary retention glaucoma and sexual dysfunction it may result in cognitive problems weight gain and it may result in cardiac problems and rash due to being and it may have effects on liver as well if there is severity of symptoms if a person is having some comorbid problems we will try not to give tricyclic antidepressants like if they are intolerant there is excessive weight gain or if there is depression with ocd when depression is undesirable some other drugs include monoamine oxidase inhibitors trazodone and mynserin the first line drugs which we are u- using these days are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors i will be explaining them afterwards but please ponder on this point this is very important that adverse effects become come earlier while therapeutic effects take longer time so people tend to leave the medication earlier so we need to educate them that they do not uh, if they stick to the medication it is better because the response will take some time to come and do not change the drugs or doses frequently do not try to prescribe drug for every symptom as i already explained that tricyclic antidepressants are contraindicated in certain physical conditions the list is here ssris are one of the drugs which we use as first line they improve the level of serotonin by inhibiting reuptake examples are floxetine citalopram sertraline and some others as well these are very effective drugs like tricyclic antidepressants they have lesser side effects and the safety profile is better although the some some side effects are there as well like gastrointestinal symptoms headache insomnia dizziness feeling sweaty and delayed orgasm if the drugs aren't helping much and we have tried a number of them then we may go to electroconvulsive therapy which is very effective treatment for depression itself and also for mixed anxiety and depression if there is severe depression if the patient is suicidal or not eating or drinking anything we can think about going to electroconvulsive therapy which is very useful and effective mode of treatment these are a few um indications of electroconvulsive therapy if there is severity of symptoms patients of extreme age group or comorbidity uh, either physical or psychiatric we need to refer to the specialist psychological treatment includes a number of psychotherapies like cognitive behavioral therapy and reassurance and education about the illness 
Socially, we can help take help from daily activity, card skills training, and improving the environmental factors. This is a brief summary of the things which we already already explained. But important thing it is associated with high morbidity and mortality and cost. Primary care physicians can provide effective treatment. This is all about mixed anxiety and depression. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please drop in the comments below. I shall try to respond. Um,